Hello everyone and thanks once again for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. Up first we've got uh, hazardous weather graphics and like yesterday there are no advisories, watches or warnings out uh, for the Aleutians, Bering Sea, Southern Alaska, also for the southeast coast and the central interior and up to the north same thing no advisories, watches or warnings out for the next uh, day or so. And so moving on to satellite imagery you can see uh, clouds over the Copper River Basin extending up into the central and east central interior area today. And then a front having moved through the panhandle followed by uh, showers this afternoon moving into the uh, central coast of the panhandle there with some scattered showers up along the eastern north Gulf Coast into the northern panhandle. And out to the west, uh, clouds with the next system and frontal boundary there moving into the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula and extending back uh, toward ADAC and then kind of an upper trough there over the Shimian Atu area and some clearing over the southwest part of the state as well as Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, northwest winds of 25-35 miles per hour, west-northwest winds there, clearing it out uh, especially on the east side of the island there with uh, mostly clear skies this afternoon, dry conditions, and uh, but areas of snow falling over the Copper River Basin today that was in the form of rain along the North Gulf Coast which ended earlier today and uh, also for the eastern North Gulf Coast just some scattered showers lingering this afternoon but areas of snow from the Copper River Basin up into the Tanana Valley mid and upper Tanana Valley 40 mile country area there and then just some snow showers up in the Yukon Flats area uh, kind of scattered mostly dry conditions there but some of that moisture might move up uh, late this afternoon and or by early this evening and overnight tonight. Otherwise anywhere from uh, one to three inches falling over the Copper River Basin today up into uh, the Fairbanks area, Delta Junction, Nanana, McKinley Park, uh, all picking up uh, anywhere from one to three inches. Some areas could have seen a little bit more. Other areas seeing less and then also some areas of uh, light snow over the western interior that became more of a mixed condition as you head out toward the uh, coastline there in the southwest flow coming in off the uh, open waters of the Bering Sea, keeping the snowfall levels more or less up above sea level. But uh, eastern Arctic coast, or along the Arctic coast, especially the central and eastern coast, uh, gusty winds of anywhere from 30 to 40 miles per hour today. And then with that low there over the eastern uh, Gulf of Alaska and some weak ridging into the central interior, gusty north winds uh, crossed uh, north Gulf coast today Places like Seward seeing peak wind gusts about 31 miles per hour and of course that uh, resulting in clear skies there as well as much of the Kenai Peninsula up into the northern Cook Inlet area in the Susitna Valley seeing some clearing and uh, showers along the Panhandle today. 12 hour rainfall amounts range from half an inch at Yakutat and that's just about ended currently there and then down to the south uh, Petersburg, Klawak picked up about a third of an inch of precipitation and some scattered showers out over the Aleutians, especially with that trough uh, farther to the west there. Actually some rain now moving up into the uh, Atka Island area and the eastern Aleutians and toward the Alaska Peninsula during the afternoon hours. And we'll see for tonight, uh, trough uh, keeps areas of snow going from the northwest interior, uh, right down across the Koba, Koyukuk Valley, some of that moving into the Yukon Flats up to the southern slopes of the Eastern Brooks range, but that'll be pretty light there. Should be dry over the North Slope. But periods of light snow continue uh, through the night for the uh, mid and upper Tanana Valley down into the Eastern Copper River Basin, especially the Northeastern Copper River Basin, Nabesna and those areas. And dry for the North Gulf Coast with uh, areas of clearing, even more clearing over South Central Alaska, Manuska, Susitna Valley. And look for the clouds to increase as well as the moisture for Kodiak Island late tonight as that low south of the Alaska Peninsula begins to uh, affect the area there. And then showers diminishing 
may be lingering along the coast of Prince of Wales Island by late tonight, but the remainder of the pan out drying out pretty nicely with increasing clearing to the north. And winds uh, coming down a little bit for the eastern and central Arctic coast overnight tonight. Maybe a few flurries and some fog there, but winds will be on the increase for the Alaska Peninsula with that system. And then the trough over the western Aleutians today pushes some light rain, fog, and drizzle into the central Aleutians tonight. And looking ahead to tomorrow, first day of the weekend, that low it deepens as it tracks northeastward there, just south of the Alaska Peninsula. That'll bring gale force winds uh, with gusts of 40 to 60 miles per hour into Kodiak Island with rain moderate to heavy at times with uh, gale warnings also for the Alaska Peninsula. And look for rain into Bristol Bay, turning to showers as you head southwest there toward Falls Pass, some scattered showers for the eastern Aleutians. And then the next system farther out to the west, That'll bring some uh, rain and uh, possible gale force winds in advance of the front and a narrow band there into the far western Aleutians. Otherwise, scattered showers of the Primaloffs and mostly sunny south central Alaska right up into the uh, Tanana Valley. Could see some clearing with the snow over now. Uh, some snow showers over the uh, Kobuk Valley northwestward to the Noatak Valley, maybe the wet northwest coast. Scattered rain and snow showers for the Yukon Delta and mostly in the form of snow inland areas of the Seward Peninsula and some uh, clearing and sunshine looks dry for Saturday definitely dry could be mostly sunny for the pan it could be some morning low clouds and fog in areas there actually anywhere over the southeast coast could see morning low clouds and fog but that'll burn off uh, for midday to afternoon sunshine there extending into the afternoon different story for Sunday for the southeast coast so as you'll see that uh, low center tracks northeastward to just off the central and south coast uh, by late in the afternoon with front pushing inland. That's going to bring 40 knot gale force winds to all of the panhandle during the day on Sunday, diminishing as that front moves in. And then the system over the western Aleutians Saturday tracks eastward, makes a pretty good trip or makes a pretty good jog to the east right up to the southwest coast Sunday afternoon with increasing uh, south winds and rain and snow pushing into the southwest interior. Rain into Bristol Bay, gusty winds with rain and fog for the Alaska Peninsula eastern Aleutians and along the frontal boundary periods of rain along the central Aleutians and then another weaker system uh, brings small craft advisory level winds into the western Aleutians uh, during the afternoon on Sunday with uh, probably small craft advisory level winds also for the southwest coast. Another low center near the Bering Strait keeps it unsettled with, uh, again, snow showers over the inland areas, mixed rain and snow possible over the open waters of the Chukchi Sea, but uh, no attack valley in the northwest coast likely seeing some light snow, but dry over the, uh, Kobuk, or over the Koyukuk Valley in the Yukon Flats, lingering snow showers possible along the Alaska Range down into the Northeast Copper River Basin, Northway Toke, uh, from about Eagle southward to the Eastern Alaska Range, and then dry and mostly sunny for the Eastern nor or for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, Kodiak Island, uh, diminishing Northwest winds as that high as that high pressure ridge slowly shifts eastward. Lows for tonight for the Panhandle, mid 30s to near 40. Otherwise, in the 20s for much of the inland areas of South Central Alaska, Bristol Bay in the lower 30s. Same thing for uh, Kachemak Bay, mid 30s, Kodiak Island. Highs tomorrow, 40 or into the lower 40s for Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula area in the North Gulf Coast. And in the 40s for the Panhandle, 30s everywhere else except uh, Kodiak Island in the mid 40s, upper 30s, the lower 40s for Bristol Bay. Lows in the teens for the Copper River Basin, otherwise 20s for the Manuska Susitna Valley, mid 20s for the Kuskokwim Valley, and 30s to near 40 for the Panhandle near freezing for Yakutab. Followed by highs in the 40s, maybe 50 around Klawak and Craig, near 30 for the Copper River Basin, lower 30s for the Kuskokwim Valley, and upper 30s to near 40 for South Central Alaska, lower 40s for Bristol Bay. And up to the north, lows in the teens and 20s tonight. Uh, Brooks range out to the Arctic coast, 20s to lower 30s south of the mountains, followed by highs in the uh, mid 30s to upper 30s for the Seward Peninsula. Chillier as you head east toward Eagle, 20s, Brooks range out to the Arctic coast. Single numbers in the Brooks range in store for Sunday morning, otherwise uh, teens and 20s. Highs in the 30s, except uh, mid to upper teens for the Brooks range. 
And then out to the southwest for lows tonight near freezing or lower to mid 30s, Bristol Bay and the southwest coast, St. Lawrence Island, closer to 40 for the Aleutians, upper 30s for the Pribilofs, highs tomorrow in the 40s, just about everywhere except for St. Lawrence Island, the upper 30s, lows in the 30s, lower to mid along the southwest coast, 40s for the Aleutians, followed by highs 40s to lower 50s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Line weather for the first day of the weekend. Saturday morning, IFR, West Central Interior, up across uh, the northern valleys there, with uh, that including the Kuskokwim Valley, VFR, Cook Inlet, uh, Susitna, Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula. Some marginal VFR moving up to southwest Kodiak Island, back into the IFR for the Alaska Peninsula and Eastern Aleutians, up to about uh, St. George and St. Paul, and sharp edge there breaks out the VFR for the southwest coast, St. Lawrence Island, and VFR for the North Gulf Coast and Northern Panhandle. And for the afternoon, let's see, get the right arrow there, Marginal VFR over much of interior Alaska from the Arctic coast right on down into the Copper River Basin, eastern North Gulf Coast, as well as a panhandle. And some uh, VFR there in the central interior, just south of the Yukon River, and also across south central Alaska. VFR conditions from the western Alaska range across the northern Kenai Peninsula to Prince William Sound. Marginal VFR, southern Kenai Peninsula, Kamashak, Kachemak Bays, IFR, Kodiak Island across the Aleutian Range into Bristol Bay, northward into the Kuskokwim Valley, all the way up to the lower Yukon River, and uh, more IFR, Kotzebue Sound, and along the northwest coast, as well as St. Lawrence Island, down to St. Matthew Island, and VFR for Atka, IFR for Chimianat too. And then for the uh, Sunday morning time frame, got some scattered areas of VFR from South Central Alaska to the Brooks Range with Areas of marginal VFR from the eastern Arctic coast, southward across the Copper River Basin of Prince William Sound. IFR pushing into the north coast of the Panhandle, otherwise marginal VFR there, but uh, northern Lynn Canal, Haines up to Skagway look pretty good with VFR flying. And some IFR along the west coast into the central interior, southward to Iliamna Lake and northeast Bristol Bay. Another zone of IFR pushing eastward across the uh, Southern Bering Sea and um, approaching Adak Island late in the day. And then for Sunday afternoon, that area of IFR covers all of the Aleutians to the Western Alaska Peninsula and more IFR along the southwest coast, actually from northern Bristol Bay, Togiak Bay, right on up across the western interior there, across the Seward Peninsula, Buckland, Kotzebue, Kivalina, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, and the uh, central Arctic coast. Pretty good VFR with some scattered areas of marginal VFR, central and eastern interior, and areas south and east of the Alaska Range. Sunday afternoon, VFR including Kodiak Island, Copper River Basin, North Gulf Coast, IFR for most of the Panhandle. Passes, Anatuvik and marginal, occasional marginal, Anatuvik and Adigan, occasional marginal VFR for Saturday. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, starting out marginal, but becoming VFR, for the afternoon into early evening. Rainy, marginal VFR to start and then VFR to finish. Windy, marginal VFR at times throughout the day Saturday. And for Isabel, marginal. Mintasto looks occasional, mostly marginal actually. Tanita, mostly VFR and VFR for Portage. And Chilkootin White, VFR. Looking at the freezing levels uh, at the surface right on down along the southwest coast but north of St. Lawrence Island just about to the Bering Strait and then along and just off the North Gulf Coast cutting across the northern Panhandle and then southeastward along the border. Otherwise two to four thousand feet there over the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. And for icing, system uh, tracking east Bring some uh, light to isolated moderate rime ice in Kodiak Island and the Alaska Peninsula in the Aleutian Range area. And another system spreads another batch into the far western Aleutians late in the day. Otherwise, the remainder of Alaska looking pretty good and mostly icing free. Jet stream, main jet just south of the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island up to 155 knots. Westerly is 100 knots into the western Aleutians. And northwest 105 plus there for the panhandle. 
9,000 feet, pretty light winds across mainland Alaska and the southeast coast, but up to 40 knots west-southwest across uh, St. Lawrence Island and the western Seward Peninsula, west 65 knots over the western Aleutians, and at 3,000 feet, uh, pretty light winds over much of interior Alaska, the Panhandle, but 40 to 50 knot winds out of the east with that low center just south of Kodiak Island, southwest 35 knots over the Alaska Peninsula. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And joining us once again is our good friend Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. Uh, he is here and has been here many times to talk to us about weather satellites and how those can help Alaskans understand our weather, how we can do better detection, keep more people safe from things even like volcanic ash. But today, Eric, you're going to talk to us a little bit more about weather satellites and how that can keep Alaskans safe and protect our property from wildfire, right? That's right, Dave. Uh, today's topic is uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh -huh. And uh, thanks for having us back again to Alaska Anytime. Weather. Well, um, Weather satellites have a lot of different instruments on them. Uh -huh. It turns out that the electromagnetic spectrum has a lot going on in it, and only one part of that is visible light, what we see. Right. Weather satellites, of course, report that. Today's topic is wildfires. Okay. There are some people who say that in Alaska in the summertime, you don't have severe weather. These people are usually from Oklahoma <laughs> or somewhere, and, and F5 tornadoes tend not to occur in Alaska. Right. People have also said what we do have in the summer. What is Alaska's severe summer weather can be hydrology, right. flash flood and, and uh, erosion mm -hmm. in the mountains and things like that, and fires, right. wildfires. Absolutely. Those were here in 2004, certainly remember that. I've got an example here from 2014. Mm -hmm. Now, it was a quiet season overall, but in May, down on the Kenai Peninsula, we had a uh, wildfire on the Funny River, mm -hmm. and this is a satellite image from a satellite, a polar orbiter that went right over Alaska, mm -hmm. and we can see the plume of smoke coming out of that fire on the Kenai, curling down, it's caught in the wind, right. it goes down toward Kodiak Island, curves around, you can see it circulating around a low pressure system that's in the Gulf yeah, of Alaska. It was a beautiful picture. Oh my gosh. Except there was a fire. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fire there. The nice thing is with this satellite image, you can tell where, this, where the fire origin is, where right. the smoke is coming from. And um, it's a color image. We're looking at the wavelength spectrum of about 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers or microns. Mm -hmm. That's what the human eye would see. If you were riding on the satellite and look down, you could see this kind of an image. Right. So that's pretty nice. But it turns out there's more to the electromagnetic spectrum than just visible light. Okay. You've heard of infrared ultraviolet, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. If we move into longer wavelengths, let's go to one specifically, 3.7 microns. Okay, 3.7. Why worry about that one? Okay. Well, we've got an example here. 3.7, it turns out, happens to be very sensitive to a certain temperature range, temperatures where fires burn. Okay. And so we've got an example zoomed in a little more from that same Funny River fire mm -hmm. down on the Kenai Peninsula, and we can see that you get up into a few hundred degrees Fahrenheit, right. and that's where the colors are. We can see there... Um, on the Funny River Fire to the west and to the east, almost a horseshoe shape there, mm -hmm. is not only we're seeing where the fire is in a general sense, but specifically where it's the active so fire that is where front. it's burning right now. Mm -hmm. And it's 3.7 okay. microns is the important temperature there. Okay. That's right. So it, this is really important to firefighters on the ground, people that are making plans and directing the firefighters and where they need to go and cut the trenches and keep people safe. You know it. Wow. If you want to fight that fire, you got to know where it is. Okay. You got to know the leading edge. We've also got a movie loop, nothing mm -hmm. quite like animating it in time. Yeah. You can see the fire spreading out over time with a succession of films cool. or a succession of uh, images. Mm -hmm. Now this is one channel, 3.7 micron. You know, we looked at that color smoke image before. Right. And that's actually a red, a green, and a blue. That's how you get color imagery. Uh -huh. What if you took three different wavelengths in the infrared? You went from like 2.2 um, micron, 1.5 micron, up to 3.7. You mix them together, you get this other kind of color image, which is even a better way to oh, wow. sharply bring out the details of where that leading edge of the fire is. Okay. You'll note, though, in the infrared, guess what? We don't see the smoke. Uh, that's too bad. Okay. And on these movie loops, you can see the clouds go by. These channels can't see through clouds. The lesson is there's no one perfect solution. You've got to okay. have the visible, you've got to have some of that infrared single 3.7 channel, some of the infrared mixing mm -hmm. to help get a different perspective. 
another one. We've talked before about a, a fun channel called the Day Night Band. Yes, one of my favorites. Oh yeah, and in Alaska in the winter, it's great. We've got all this darkness. The Day Night Band is so sensitive to seeing light. Uh -huh. um, you can see features that otherwise aren't available. Now in Alaska, when you have a forest fire, it tends to be light out all the time. Right. It's our summer. But we can go down south to the Rim Fire in California in okay. 2013. Now, okay, it was in California, not Alaska, but Alaskan crews went down to fight that fire, so we Fair can enough. talk about it here in Alaska weather. Here we have a, a 3.7 micron channel shot of the, of the rim fire. Again, kind of a horseshoe shape showing right. that active fire front down there. And then we'll look again to the day-night band, the visible light, and then you can see how the fire is all bright. You can see the active fire front and actually the, the city lights over there too. Turns yes. out that the cities, while they're active in a social sense, are not really hot in a fire sense. So um, they don't show up in the 3.7 micron. They're not hot like a fire is, but the fire in the cities look the same from a visible light perspective. And a fun thing here too is that we can see the smoke plume going north from the rim fire wow. on the uh, on the day-night band. So yeah. if we were ever to have, like in 2004 in Alaska, you get mm -hmm. dark at night, we still had an active fire season that year. Right, that was right. A, you know that really bad year. The day-night band didn't exist then, but it, if we had fires now in August, we could use it then. The lesson here is weather satellites, they offer many different wavelengths of light. Uh -huh. Some are used for different purposes, and some of these we just looked at tonight are especially helpful here in Alaska to find and to track the behavior of these wildfires so the crews can go out there and do their jobs. Sure, sure. So a satellite toolbox for the, the firefighting crews and the fire weather forecasters, and it just underlines how important satellites are, uh, especially for Alaska and our, our mission for the National Weather Service to uh, protect life and property and uh, also to enhance the national economy. So wonderful mm -hmm. stuff there, Eric. And people can look at pictures uh, like this anytime by going to gina.alaska.edu. Uh, you'll find images there all around Alaska at various times of the year and not just about fire weather, but uh, volcanic ash and smoke and uh, anything else you want to check out. They're always beautiful pictures and always interesting to look at no matter what time of the day. Thanks again for joining us, Eric. We appreciate it and welcome you back anytime uh, for this edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. See you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, continuing to uh, grow there along the central and eastern uh, Beaufort Sea coast, uh, especially into Mackenzie Bay and a little bit on the western Arctic coast there, as well as in Kotzebue Sound. And it'll continue to increase here for the next several days, or at least through the weekend. And from here, we'll go to the coastal water forecast. Small craft advisories for the south coast of the Panhandle. Northwest winds, 25 knots. Central coast east winds at 20 knots. And then variable winds, 5 to 15 knots for the north coast. Lincoln Canal Glacier Bay, north winds at 10 knots. Stevens Passage, northwest at 10. And Clarence Strait, looking at a northwest wind at 15 knots for Saturday with 7-foot seas. And then quite a change for Sunday, that next storm moving northeastward into the Gulf. Uh, gale warnings for the entire southeast coast. On the south coast, 40-knot uh, winds from the south and southwest with seas a little over 20 feet. And for the north coast, east winds at 40 knots with 11 to 16-foot seas. Uh, Clarence Strait also looking at gale force southeasterly winds of 40 knots and small craft advisories for Stevens Passage, southeast at 25, Lynn Canal, north winds 25 knots with 5 foot seas. For Prince William Sound, winds will be north at 15 knots Saturday, northern Cook Inlet, northeast at 15, southern Cook Inlet, northeast 25 with 7 foot seas, north winds at 25 knots for Kamishak Bay, Barren Islands, westerlies at 25. And for the western North Gulf Coast, winds will be northwest at 20 knots and variable at 15 with 8-foot seas for the eastern North Gulf, North Gulf Coast. And then on Sunday, eastern North Gulf Coast, gale warnings, northwest winds 40 knots. And Prince William Sound, north winds 20 knots. Gale warnings for the Barren Islands, northwest winds 35 knots. For the western North Gulf Coast and Kamishak Bay, Northwest winds at 30 knots. For Cook Inlet, north to northeast winds 10 to 15 knots with seas at 2 to 3 feet. And for uh, Kodiak Island, gale warnings on Saturday. East to south winds at 35 knots. And gale warnings uh, for the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, southeast winds 45 knots. And for Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, northeast winds at 30 knots with 6 to 8 foot seas. Then for Sunday, gale warnings for the Alaska Peninsula, 
West Southwest winds 35 knots, Bristol Bay west winds at 30 knots, Kodiak Island gale warnings west winds 25 to 35 knots. And for the Eastern Aleutians, west to northwest winds 25 to 40 knots with 6 to 12 foot seas, Central Aleutians west at 20, and then gale warnings coming into the Western Aleutians with the next front for southwest winds at 35 knots. South to southwest winds 30 knots for the uh, Western Aleutians on Sunday. Central Aleutians, southwest 30 to 35 knots. Eastern Aleutians, same thing. Southwest winds 30 to 35 knots with 12 to 16 foot seas. Pribilofs on Saturday, variable winds at 10 knots. Southwest at 15 for Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island. West winds 15 knots for the Yukon Delta Coast. Northeast at 25 for the Cuscom Delta Coast. And for Sunday, St. Lawrence Island, southwest winds 20 knots. South to southwest winds, 30 knots for the southwest coast. Gale warnings for the Pribilof Islands, southwest winds at 35 knots. Norton Sound, small craft advisories, south winds 25 knots. Central and eastern Beaufort Sea coastline for Saturday. Small craft advisories, east winds 25 to 30 knots, seas up to 8 feet. Western Arctic coast, southeast winds 20 knots. And for the Chukchi Sea, south winds at 15 knots. Those will pick up a little bit for the Chuck CC on Sunday, south to southeast to 20 knots, southeast 20 knot winds in the forecast for the western Arctic coast, small craft advisories of the central and eastern Arctic coast for east winds at 25 to as high as 30 knots. For tonight, look for areas of snow from the uh, central and eastern Copper River Basin up across the mid and upper Tanana Valley, some of that into the Yukon Flats, uh, snow showers there, and then back to the northwest coast. Drying and uh, light winds and mostly clear skies. South Central Alaska next storm brings gusts of 50 miles an hour with rain. Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula next storm brings some rain into the western Aleutians. Otherwise mostly clear for the Panhandle and southern and southeast Alaska. And then for the day on Sunday, that storm rolls right up into the Panhandle with gale force winds ahead of that front. Rain moderate to heavy at times in the central and southern areas. And then that system pushes eastward from the western Bering Sea tomorrow to the southwest coast Sunday afternoon with rain and increasing winds with that and another system that's weaker out over the western Bering Sea. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.